All right, so you guys have seen uh, Tier do a self-application uh, with this tourniquet on his arm. Now he's gonna show you how to do a self-application on his leg. Um, <clears throat> we find ourselves out in the woods a lot as hunters by ourselves, or maybe we leave camp and kind of split up and go different directions. Uh, so it's really good to be able to do this on your own and also kind of keep your, uh, you know, have, have confidence that you know how to do it. So when you do have that emergency happen, it's, you're not in a panic situation. Mm -hmm. So let's see uh, what you got for doing the leg. All right, so when we're using this on our leg, we assume that we have uh, both hands available. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is we want to make sure that we don't have any obstructions. So take stuff out of the pocket. And keep it close by, because you need to call for help. This buckle is gonna slide apart. If we push at an angle, we can get it apart just like that. It's less important which way we pull the strap because we have both hands available to us. If we're laying flat on the ground or in a chair or anything else, we have a natural arch behind our knee. We're gonna use that space to slip the tourniquet underneath our leg, and then we're just gonna seesaw it above the wound. Buckle and take out the slack. And from there, pull up on the windlass and start twisting. You can tell it's working because my leg is starting to raise. It's starting to straighten up. Yeah. Now with the soft heat tourniquet, we have two ways to secure this windlass. We've got the, uh, the little C grip, clamp, sure, whatever. And then we have this triangle. That's just a backup that can go over there as well. And I know that's working because that does not feel good. So that little uh, <clears throat> triangle piece that went over the end there, mm -hmm. that's another thing, like if you're helping get your buddy out, you've put that on his leg, um, you're going through brush and all that stuff. Uh, that is something that we, if you don't have that done, this can potentially pop out of that's, that little C-clamp. That's correct. And let's see if I can induce a, a mechanical failure here without doing too much. So we're going down the mountain sticks are hitting, things like that. And now my guy's bleeding death again and nobody knows it. Yeah, if he's not conscious, he's not, maybe he's panicked or he's in shock, uh, he could be back there bleeding while you're working to save his life all the while, uh, you know, you're losing the battle here. That's right. Now you notice I did not try to slip this over my leg the way I, I put it over my arm. One, because I'm not that flexible and I don't wanna embarrass myself on camera. But also, this is more realistic. If you're, if you're truly injured, you might have a fracture that's associated with this as well. So it's important to be able to practice uh, taking this apart, using that arch behind the knee, and doing that seesaw method, rather than just putting it over the end of the, the foot and, and uh, working your way up the leg like a lasso. And there again, how far above the wound should that be? A minimum of two fingers. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna head outside, uh, go out in the field, and show you guys how to apply this tourniquet to a hunting partner. All right, we're here in the wilds of Josh's, Josh Smith's front yard and uh, a Montana Knife Company employee, Melissa, has brutally injured herself in, in this wilderness. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna demonstrate how to place a tourniquet on somebody's arm. Ideally, when you're doing this, you wanna use their tourniquet, not yours, because you wanna keep yours for you but in most cases that other person is not gonna have a tourniquet. Oh wait, we've, well first we assess where the injury is. For training purposes, we're gonna say it's right above the elbow here. She cut herself pretty good. How did you do that? Not important. If there's not uh, bones sticking out or anything else, we're just going to take the end of the limb, thumb to buckle, just like we did on ourselves, making sure it's at least two fingers above the injury. Grab that windlass and take out the slack. When we're putting a tourniquet on somebody else, we have the option or the ability to put that windlass on the outside. And that's helpful to the provider. We can uh, make better adjustments as opposed to it being on the inside where it's gonna run into the armpit. Lift up, and we can really crank this thing down on somebody else. And if you watch her face, she's pretty tough. Secure it in the, in the C-grip, and then place the triangle over 
or added security. So when we're placing this <clears throat> on, a, on another casually, or even on ourselves, one way we can tell if this tourniquet is effective without actually removing the clothing and seeing the wound itself is we can feel for a pulse. If we can feel a pulse, then arterial blood is still making its way past the tourniquet. If we don't feel a pulse, we're either really bad at taking a pulse or we've got an effective tourniquet. When we place the tourniquet on a casualty's leg, we have two methods we can do it. We can do the one that I showed earlier in self-application where we take the tourniquet apart, or if the casualty's leg is mostly intact, no bones sticking out, it's laying normal, it's not laying at a weird angle like it's not supposed to be, then we can go around the end just like we would if we were putting it on our arm. What we have to be careful of here is that the tourniquet doesn't get twisted on the way up. So we work that tourniquet up so it's at least two fingers above the wound. Grab the windlass, take out the slack, and twist the windlass until the bright red bleeding stops. Once secure, slip that triangle over, and we're good.